Welcome everybody to Clang the Podcast, now sponsored by the wonderful people at DRC Shipping. What do their services include, Pete? So they include warehousing, pick pack fulfilment, air freight import and export, ocean freight import and export, road freight to and from all major European cities and their pharma specialists. They've also uh, got a specialism in publisher services, so exporting magazines and books worldwide. Fantastic. For all your shipping needs and the export-import business, DRC Shipping, everybody. Check their website out. Now, enjoy the podcast. (laughs) We've got mugs, everybody. Uh, Good evening and welcome to what we're going to kindly refer to as a highlights package of uh, season one of Clang, the podcast. Welcome, Pete. Well, good evening, Mr. Um, Smiley. Now... Here we are, uh, 12 episodes later, um, oh, after yeah. that idea you had in the pub that night. Yep. Um, and people are really enjoying Clang the Podcast. Who like it thought it, eh? On a regular basis by people. Quite surprising, actually. I've had a few people who have, who are completely bamboozled me. I got stopped in a garden centre yesterday by someone who went, loving your podcast, mate. Well funny. <laughs> Actually, then... you've just you've just reminded me of something which I never... I, I was telling somebody this the other day because I went to... So, um, I was telling you earlier. I'm telling everybody else. I went to the Arsenal Man City ladies game at the Emirates Stadium at the weekend and a friend of mine was, was with us uh, and she's an Arsenal fan. And she was going, oh, David Seaman, David Seaman. Oh, great. And I was going, yeah, you know, he played for City. And I also... I met him in a in a garden centre in Hemel Hempstead. Oh, there I there go. I was there I was amongst the clematis. Nice. Uh, and I turned round and I looked at this bloke. Well, actually, rather, I looked sort of in this bloke's stomach. Uh, bearing in mind, I'm about six foot, and I looked him straight in the belly button and looked Is up. And went, oh my God! It's David Seaman. He was enormous. You got big and hands. He just, yeah, massive, massive, lovely bloke. Just gave me a beaming smile, and I just looked at him. And went, oh. <laughs> Couldn't make really anything to say. I Excellent. didn't. I didn't even get to say to him, "How was the fish?" Uh, I've always imagined that like goalkeepers are a little bit of a freak of nature. And oh yeah, got massive hands. Yeah, well, like base, players, from... base players. Base players got massive hands. Have you got massive hands. Don't know. I mean, don't know. I suppose if I hold them there, they're pretty big. Yeah, um, no, Casper Schmeichel being the sort of like uh, hmm. uh, exception to that rule. He's a bit short, isn't he? Yeah. There's a, yeah. Never trust a short goalkeeper. I think. Oh, there's, no. a, there's a design no. fault there somewhere, if you think yeah. about it. Yeah. So, Peter, anyway. we have had immense mm. fun over the we last have. few months, haven't we? We have. We have. Um, yeah. Season one is now finished, everybody, mm-hmm. and we are already looking into, and we have actually secretly recorded a couple of season two, which are already... Um, laughing about quietly in the background. Better than season one. Um, mm. So, <laughs> I was going to say, sh- shall we chat about our what the highlights of uh, season one were? Yeah, I mean, I did have one question for you before we go down that route. <laughs> Are your parents still listening to it? It's been a lot of swearing in it. Don't know. Don't know. And I'll tell you what, they haven't mentioned it. Oh. So my thinking is no, because mm. you, I think you were a bit gut of mouth early doors. Was I? Oh, yeah, and then a few people came on and were extremely like, the language, Shelley Blonde, goodness me. Well, Butcher, Butcher, actually, butcher, he was, butcher. he was, he was a bit, he was a bit choice, wasn't he? Makes me wonder with Butch how, like, he's like a professional television presenter, yet oh. he swore like a like a trooper. How he doesn't let one slip, like, well, that's, I, I, th- I think that's the secret of it, isn't it? I mean, because this is what I, I do find it really difficult with these podcasts not to swear because the, I, I swear a lot in. Yeah. Um, I swear a lot in, in, in life generally, you know, and I think yeah. people that swear a lot of salt, you know, it's been proven that we are more trustworthy the more you swear. You see. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, I do apologize. Um, Mr. Smiley's dad. I apologize if my language was a bit. Um, yeah, I think, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think choice. it might have been, I think I set the Fruity. one up for my dad. I went, dad, I've got Mark Butcher. He went, oh, great big cricket fan. And he never mentioned it after. So I think yeah. like, you know, might have been mm. a little bit too effing and a jeffing. Yes, yes, yes. But again, yes. Uh, uh, deep, serious. Some, anyway, so man's well, man apologies. up, dad. Man oh. up, mum. You know. <laughs> but yes, highlights. Yes. Come on. Then. Going back to the start. Going well, back to the very start. Um, very obviously, start. our first victim 
was was the amazing Gaz Top, wasn't it? That was he was, Do you know what? He's like Gaz was a. I, I was really excited about that because Gaz is kind of like you know he's just iconic as far as I was going. Yeah. Kids TV iconic. Gilbert Howe. Just, uh, but so many people I went to and I've got, we've got Gaz Top, we've got Gaz Top. They went, they went, who? I was like, what? How oh. could you not know how Gaz Top was? I mean, obviously they were, clearly they were BBC watchers and not ITV watchers, you know. Are all a bit I think people of a certain age knew instantly. Mm. I think it was a kind of quite a, a small gap of uh, mm. age group. Um, yeah. It's obviously because I know him as a friend. So it's, it's quite funny viewers that um you know a lot of these people pete's meeting for the first time and he's obviously aware of them and i just drop it five seconds before we go live and go pete gareth gareth pete and then you're in by the end of it they're sending you bottles of whiskey and they're all best mates and offering you tickets to their gigs and blimey well take you me know, years I've to always... get friendships you know, going you bowled your way in in like 45 minutes <laughs> well you know we've always I've, I've always had this thing and I think this is what I think this is partially where the where the podcast came from is I've I've always enjoyed your stories about the various sort of like famous or semi-famous people that you've met I, I kind of I like that sort of like I, I like that thing of living my uh living out my fantasy my famous fantasies vicariously through your good self well, now you're you're also realizing that these people are absolutely as normal as as like normal who live next door. You know what I mean? Like so, yeah. Well, when yeah. you get them on the same level, you know, it, it's to say it doesn't matter how famous they get. Who was it was talking to me today? And oh, I saw Griff today, and oh, uh, yeah. he was in the studio today, and he's he's interviewing um, the guy from Mud this week, oh, the one who wrote oh, uh, "Can't Get You Out of My Head" for Kylie. Yeah, yeah. And he went, I'll see if he wants to come on your podcast. I was like, yeah, man, that'd be oh, awesome. That'd be superb. Get a, get yeah. a, a proper se- bona fide seventies glam rock star. Uh, oh, yeah. You can't, be you can't beat a bit of that. You can't yeah. beat a bit of that. But yeah, anyway, so back to, back, back to Gaz. I'm sorry. I kind of digressed there, but actually I did. I, I was going to say one other thing that what has been lovely is we haven't had any knobheads on, you know. Oh, they've yeah. all been really, oh, mean, really yeah. genuine. <laughs> well, yeah. Apart from apart from the very first episode, which was that just, was just those two us. knobheads, yeah, yeah banging yeah, on exactly. Kind of at least it couldn't couldn't really go downhill from there though. Could no, it? it's it's it's, it seems to have brought like I, I've I've noticed that people who I've spoken to who who were coming on to the podcast and the ones we've done who haven't been aired yet. They're all aware of the concept now of, of, of what it, it's about. It's not just them coming on to to kind of just twang on about what they're up to. It's like a specific thing. It's there's a you know it's about their mm. personal moments and 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 it's funny because that you you know if, if we did like a you know one a ten of of of, of fame as it were, mm. I would say. Ironically, the slightly less famous ones have been the funniest, naturally. Well, you know yeah. what I mean. We'll I think we have to both. We'll get to that. We'll get. We'll, we'll get. We'll get to that. But we'll yeah, so, that. But, so yeah. let's. Are we? Are we going to do it in order? Yeah, I think we should do it in order. Why not? Yeah. Well, memories. So, yeah. so Gareth, I think Gareth, he um, he he really hit the high one very very quickly, didn't he? Oh, he did. When he oh, pulled he out the second he man did. to walk on the moon. He did, he did. That was like you're kind of sitting there when somebody goes, Oh yeah, who's your best clang? Well actually Buzz Aldrin yeah. going like Okay, that's gonna be tricky to beat. Um but you know, having said that, the you know, there were there were some good ones. But he was yeah, that was a great story. I love the fact story. with his as well, because I, I did I did listen to it the other day, which is quite sweet. And um mm. I love he was Typically, Gareth, where he was, he had his list, didn't he? And he was, and he, and he, just, and he <laughs> rattled them work. up. As he opposed to others who just started telling stories, Gaz, he was scripted and ready. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And he just but, went, a couple more I can read out. I just went through this massive until he hit Carol, Carol Vorderman, and you were like, oh, Carol Vorderman. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, no, he was fabulous and, 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 a, and a great way to kick off. It, a very easy way to kick off because he because he was so professional. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. But he well, was no one's an, frozen, have they? No one's frozen on screen and gone really quiet and hasn't said anything. I think you know that's no. what I think people are, are really digging. Yeah. That it, these people are they've all got a story. I've said this before. 
Yeah. You know, everyone's got one of these stories in them. So it's yeah. just dragging it out, isn't it? Yeah, well, Santa, yeah, yeah, as you say, or just, yeah, encouraging it out, mm. I think, rather than dragging it. But I think, so, I mean, also with Gaz, so he was like, I've been, uh, I've been occasionally kind of chopping things up and putting them out on um, the TikTok. TikTok. And so it's a dreadful, dreadful platform. I wouldn't even to spell it. Oh, loathe it. Um, um, but anyway, I have been doing that kind of as, as, as my kind of social media duties. Uh, and one, <laughs> one, of the, one of the clips that has gone down the best out of everything that I've posted was, unsurprisingly, was his, his story about going into a, um, going into a chemist in Stranraer. <laughs> and ordering and ordering, and ordering uh, <coughs> 20 of your strongest condoms and a, and a family pack of KY really? jelly. And I'm going to uh, spill an alien, a late yeah. next alien, and then, yeah. and then uh, have it oozing out of him on kids' telly. Yeah. yeah. There, was, there was an element of that, wasn't there, where, yeah, where he was yeah. going down a very dark avenue, I thought. But it was great. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was kind of, yes, it was, it, it was, it was dark, but kind of entertaining. I want to get, I want to get uh, Gilbert on next. I want to, I want to tap Gareth up and get Phil Cornwall on. So I think he, he might tell an even better story about Gilbert. Oh. So I'll yeah. tap him up on that do you reckon, one. Yeah, do you reckon we could actually get get Gil actually get Gilbert on? Oh, where's Gilbert now? Imagine actually Ooh. getting him on as the puppet. That would be yeah. amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Wow. Well, one can dream. So, yeah, exactly. Well, so yeah. The, the, the great so was, thing about yeah. that was that we then hop, skips and jumps into Ian McNabb, who still one of my favourite humans. I uh, do you know what? I mean. I think that was, it's difficult to say because, you know, you kind of look back on these things and I know I, I laugh. There, there are two or three of these that I've laughed my way through. One was, one was Griff, one was Jamie. And but Ian was just that first one of, he just like some of that man's stories. I mean, my, my favorite bit of Ian has to be, just the, the tale of him ending up in the urinals between oh. Paul McCartney and Eric Clapton. I mean, <laughs> I love the fact that that brought. So at the, at the start, it was like Ian McNabb, kind of, you know, bit of rock royalty. And then when you put him in that scenario, he's like the minion <laughs> in between these two superstars. And he's kind exactly. of. It, it, exactly. It, it grounded him immediately. But I think the fact that there's definitely something about the Scouse accent that adds a little bit of humour to these scenarios, you know what I mean? Oh, and yeah. he's he's funny anyway. He he, he rings me up out, out of nowhere and always makes me laugh. I'm going to stay with him next weekend, actually. Oh, nice. And yeah. Nab Towers, so that should be interesting. Ah, yeah. I'll report back cool. on that one. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. No, I, uh, sh hopefully there'll be some good stories to come out of that one. Yeah. Probably, probably won't make it onto Clang's, uh, the podcast, only because, uh, yes, probably we'll shouldn't see. be repeated. But uh, he was, he was, great. and I'm really pleased as well because, like, he's, he's, as I say, people like him, you don't always get them as, 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 as kind of forward as front men and all that. They don't always come on things like this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he was straight in and to, to kick off with those two, and then I think we started thinking about looking slightly outside the box, didn't we? About trying to get more the more random characters we did we did, we did. You know. but i mean just just go just going back to it i mean to me did you did you was i mean obviously there was that story of the urinals but was was is there anything else that really stands out to you from that because i the other one that that just i think because it just kind of to me summed him up and i can imagine him doing it in his scouse accent was uh the meeting of brian wilson when oh, everybody's man. going, don't go, don't talk to him, don't talk to him. Of course, McNabb comes out and he goes, "Fuck it." <laughs> goes, Amazing, because we've all we've all been there, and that's come up quite a lot about <laughs> saying stuff you don't know what to say, etc. That's just, I love that. I was waiting for him to go, and then Brian Wilson says to me, "You're one of my favourite." Brian Wilson cut him dead. Loved it. Yeah, he's Security. a real man. He's like he's the same as us, old McNabb. You cut him, he bleeds. You know what I mean? So, no, he was fascinating. So. And then, obviously, in the in the current climate, we have a little bit of a well, kind yeah. of kudos. So we had Dylan White, mm. the famous plugger, who stories and tales of Oasis. Mm. Of course, now every Tom, Dick, and Barbara has tried and get tickets to see them. 
Yeah. Um, you know, apart from all the musicians I know, which is very strange. <laughs> all the musicians I know, you, you should, did you try and get tickets? No. Like, but everybody down my street did, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was interesting because that we kind of got a little bit of an insight early doors of what a superstar Liam already was and and what yeah. Noel was like and from a kind yeah. of you know um, Dylan being the man who was trying to put their songs on the radio. I found that fascinating about the whole process of how yeah. he used, it was like it was like a car salesman, wasn't he? At yeah, Capital basically. Radio on a, on basically. eight o'clock in the morning, just like queuing up to please. Will you listen to this? Will you listen to this? And then he had them in his pocket, which is amazing. Yeah. But didn't he sort of like so? I mean, also, I mean, this this didn't come out on the podcast, but I've been kind of like I, I've been following Dylan on on Facebook since, and some he's got he's he's almost worth he's he's probably worth getting back almost probably worth getting back on because he's like he's got so many other really interesting stories because uh. he didn't he audition for the great rock and rolls for. Um, Johnny Rotten in the Great Rock and Roll Swing. There's a lot more to Dylan than meets the eye, mm. and he's got he's got some drummer stories as well. And he, I think yeah. if you watch it at the end, he goes, "I've I've got some drummer stories." It's like too late, <laughs> you're too late, mate. You know, you 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 used them up with all your Oasis chats. You well, know, didn't he do? Didn't he do? What, didn't he do U two as well? Yeah. yeah, yeah, quite a bit of U two as well. Mm. Um, and stayed quite friendly with uh, Adam Clayton, didn't he? So yeah. yeah, um, there's a lot more to that man. He's another one. The majority of them, you could get them back on without yeah. a doubt. You know, oh, yeah. I think once yeah. you we'd open the door to a few of them, and then suddenly, yeah. like they all came flying through the door. You and know, that, yeah. And I mean, particularly seeing as um, not wishing to sort of like um, not 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 wishing to uh, sort of preempt anything or kind of break any sort of um, any uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, let anything out of the bag early, shall we say? But um, the uh, come on, feel the noise story. It's great, and particularly seeing as um, I'm 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 studying that particular track very closely at the moment. You are, and we won't say why. No, we won't. But I am studying that track very closely. It's not that hard. <laughs> it's really not that hard. It's, it's no, three minutes. You'll never get back. Trust me. Um, <laughs> so, and of course, I, I loved what we did next, and we randomly picked a a female because, <laughs> like, and she's still the only female. She was, uh, well, hopefully we're going to change that. In, in yeah, series, and I have had a couple of bites of, of, of people hoping to get them on. But Shelley Blonde, uh, she is one of the nicest, most lovely human beings. And I haven't seen, like, it looked like we'd been in contact for a lot. I haven't mm. seen her for 20 years, man. I, like, mm. you know, but feel like I've known her all my life. And she's like one of my closest, closest friends. But it just shows you how much if you make a connection with someone in your life. Mm. Well, we did. We've said many a time we didn't speak for 20 years. And that wasn't because we would yeah. get on. We just, no, our circumstances just... took us. And so this has been wonderful to, to kind of reignite friendships mm. that you you knew were there, but like mm. you didn't realise just how, no, she's absolutely adorable. No, isn't she? she was, she, she was lovely. She was lovely. And I have to say the only person that's come on, come on the podcast with a matching dress and cup. And, and the first person who bought a mug, by the way. Oh, yeah. Should have uh, given, in fact, yeah, yeah, yeah. We really should have given all the guests a mug, but we're just too tight, aren't we, Pete? Yeah, we are. Well, you know, money's money's too tight to mention. Exactly. Exactly money's right. So, and and I obviously, what I loved about Shell was, so she's talking about the voiceover thing and all that, which is fascinating mm. in itself. Mm. And she starts telling this little story about when she was little and she went to America and you're kind of going, where's she going with this? this? Gabby? We, we walked up to these big, this big door and we knocked on the door and we said, is he in? And and the maid went, hang on a minute. And then Fred a staircase sashaying down the staircase. And like, he did indeed sashay. He did. Man. Which is amazing, man. And then she, and then when she opened up and it was like, you know, you really, cause, cause back in the day, Shelly, like, cause she was a bit of a TV presenter. She was yeah. very close to like, as she said, like Zoe Ball and, and, and mm. Robbie and all that kind of stuff. And she was in that little, not in mm. Hill Gang, you know. When mm. I when I met her through motels and stuff, so she was quite connected, you know. Mm. So that was interesting as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, she was. No, she was good. I thoroughly enjoyed Shell. Lovely, lovely person. There you go. If we you're like Shell. You yeah. were lovely. Yeah. You probably win the loveliest guest. Um, talking of lovely, then we had James Butch, Stevenson. Uh, oh no, no, no. We went Butch first. I was Butch it's before. Butch, it was Butch first before James, mate. Oh well, let's let's let uh, now. So Butch, who 
Uh, he's Equally got, lovely. Well, what an amazing man. I, I'm, I'm actually starting rehearsals with him tomorrow for some shows at the weekend. So I've got yeah. uh, this, the rest of this week, which I'm thoroughly looking forward to. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we, he and I uh, maintain a really good friendship because sometimes when someone's a bit famous and you know it. Mm. The other person can be a little bit intimidated, but he's not intimidated about me at all, Pete. Which I know really it's amazing, good. actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I saw that one coming a mile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, yeah. Do you supposed to? I'm, I'm supposed to be the one that sets those up, and then you knock them home. Yeah, yeah. You know. But but see that that butcher is the the when he was coming on, and I, you know, bear in mind, I kind of got to know him, and we speak, and I'm, I'm his drummer, you know. But he's still that guy on the telly who Captain England and. And, yeah. But he was, he was so normal, wasn't he, and humble, and 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 he, and he maintains that, you know. The emails we've had this week about the gigs and stuff, you know, he's, I, 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 I loved the fact that he was master of of his craft as a mm. as a sportsman, right, and got to the very pinnacle, the captain of his country, yeah, yeah. centuries, and like, and but where he's kind of now branched into mm. our world shall we say, like uh, music, he's he's not Charlie Big Potatoes. In fact, he's the opposite, and he's a little bit kind of, you know, uh, am I out of my depth, which he clearly isn't. If you listen to his <laughs> records and the way he plays no, guitar no, no, and the way he sings. But he's, he, he maintains that. He's, 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 mm. What I love about him is he's really, really super respectful of, of his musicians, his band, mm. you know what I mean? And, and, like, the way he treats everybody is um I, f- I feel you know very I'm really privileged to be doing it and I really enjoy his tunes as well. I'm looking forward to his shows. You can't come, can you? Which is a shame. No, no, I've got to go to my mother's. There you go, people. I can't. Oh, yeah. I can't. Well, she I obviously can't hasn't been to... watching the podcast either, is she? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, no, actually, that's probably true. She, but, yeah, no, she hasn't. No, I, I remember. I remember Butch. Uh, his his story about Eric Clapton because I he told me that story mm. twice, <laughs> and the second time. He was obviously oh, yeah. so excited. I let him go, and I never said That's you've already right. told me that. And then he told it for the third time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. I do the same to you, mate, as well. Yeah, but he was great. He was great. And then, then we moved on to uh, Lord Stevenson of James. We did, but there's a couple of bits from Butch that I want to sort of. Oh, go on. I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm no, no, on no. Here. I'm... no, 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 no. You steam on, but I just there are two things I remember specifically from from Butch's. I forgot. I'd forgotten his Eric Clapton story actually, uh, but his um, it was the Prince Philip story. Which I'm not repeating. Um, you oh have to go, and, ladies and gentlemen. Viewer, if you are going to go and just scrape one story from all yeah. of our podcasts, yeah, that episode, is, that episode is six. There. Episode six, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, go and listen to. It. Oh, well, funny. just watch if them you don't from one, it. one to ten or twelve or whatever they are. If yeah, you watch them in yeah. order, yeah. I find that you can watch them while having a bath. Really, I thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah. That's how I. My that's Thursday, a very long bath. My, my weekly bath at seven o'clock on a Thursday. <laughs> that's a very, bath. very long bath. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. So no. Anyway, yeah. So I just sort of. I mean, also, I, I do. I did particularly love his story about both them, about bowling both them first. Oh, bowling. I know. And I then mean, him talking just, about him. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, I mean you know as as a, as a as a sort of as a bit of a cricket fan. That's you know that. That has a special place in my heart. That story makes it a bit yeah. more real, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Somebody, but, yeah. Somebody's talking to us on our podcast about bowling Ian Botham, and yeah. you kind of go, where, "Where are we in this tree?" <laughs> you know what I mean? We're the two guys <laughs> all the way went, down. Oh, we're a podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, still, uh, it, it, it's amazing. It's, it's still a bit pinch me, isn't it? You know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely, mate. Yeah, sorry, and I know you've you've tried now twice to squeeze Mr. Stevenson into the conversation, and actually now is his time. Well, I, only because of because of the immense popularity of the man. Exactly, uh, he is he's he is an extremely popular man, James. And I think I didn't because I, I don't really <clears throat> look into the numbers, and and I think it comes in different. I do, I different do ladies and corners. gentlemen. I look a lot into. Yeah, the I don't. I couldn't. I'm obsessed really care. with the numbers, but. So is he. He mm. he's he he knows exactly. And when I saw him last week, he knew exactly how many he was on, and he knew mm. exactly who would ta- overtaken him. And yeah. it was quite sweet, really. It was a little bit like you know. I, I said to him, "Give it another nudge. You never know. You might get a few more fans." Yeah. But um, he uh, 
he, he's he's just so sweet because I'm kind of involved in a lot of stuff mm. with him, and um and 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 I love the way he just started, and once he started, you couldn't stop him. He's, yeah, he's I great. did. I I did love. I mean, the two things that I really loved about that was. I mean, A, it was just really nice. To, it was nice to finally meet him because I've seen him wandering in and out of things. And I've always been a bit like, oh, that's James. I can't speak to him. <laughs> um, he's, he's famous. Um, I have to, oddly, I have, this, I have the same thing with Matt Round, actually, as well. There's like uh, Matt Round. I haven't, I haven't yet managed to introduce myself to Matt Round. Matt Round, ladies really? and gentlemen, is Smiley's favourite bass player um, who plays with him in his, um, his Smiley's, um, Smiley's Heroes. Um, he is. For those that, but those of you who don't know, and he's Mister who's, who's bass player is he? Who does he play with? James Morrison. James Morrison. I was going to say James Stevenson, but no, it's no James Morrison. Morrison. Anyway, no, um, no, yeah, but he, he sort of like I did. I, I was really impressed when when he said I was the guitarist in Kim Wilde's Kids in America yes. video. That is yes. so cool. Because there have there have been a few moments looking back where something as 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 kind of lit our fires individually mm. where we've gone oh no, and, and that was one of them blimey dangle the words <laughs> kim and wild in the same sentence and you nearly fell off your chair so, yeah oh, yeah you all the way yeah. back to that didn't it yeah. oh yes yes i did but then and then and then him coming up with the fact that what was it what was it um um uh, tony visconti had said to him you know oh, if bowie hadn't died you'd have been on his album next album amazing no, he said that, it to me that, as that well. Would have been a he didn't say it exactly like that. He said, no, it he, eyes, he said it with his eyes. He said he looked at me. He went, "Smiley, can you pass me that towel?" And it came out as, "You would have been Bowie's next time." <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, you know. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah and, and I'm glad. Again, that's another thing where, like, people like James, I've not, I've, I've found that they they've really enjoyed it. They've really enjoyed coming on. You know, and they've mentioned it and, and asked, you know, and, and got really good comments. And, you know, as I say, he's a very popular man, James. Mm. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, love him. So who was after him? Griff. Griff. <laughs> Griff. Griff. Griff, who was like, bloody hell. I've not, I don't think, I, he was the most difficult to get a word in. I mean, yeah. he talks to... The speedy talks at is ridiculous. Speedy thinks that as well. Yeah, like yeah. I've just had him in the studio today, and um, and I had a, I had I had him doing some drumming, and I had, I had him doing some singing as well, because uh, yeah. um, he asked me to write him a Christmas song, so I did, and uh, so I, I wrote it, and I had him singing my words, but he he's because he's like hundred mile an hour. I had to show him how to word it. You know, and it was quite funny. And he just, he doesn't stop. He's like, you know, Mr. Hyperactive. Please, but please, he'll... please, please tell me it's better than that mango, strawberry, melon thing. Or well, I, I don't want to blow my own. <laughs> Sorry, Griff. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it is. It's great. It's really, <laughs> I'll t- I tell you how good it is. I, I, he asked me to write it and I, and I wrote it. And it's, I, I just got the best bits out of all the Christmas songs ever. Um, and my 14 year old daughter, who doesn't think anything I do is cool, I don't think. Mm. Um, I said to her, don't fancy singing on this Christmas track, do you? And the first time she just went, no. And then I caught her at just the right time. And I was like, fancy doing that? She went, is there money in it? And I said, yes. And she went, all right. So she said, yes. So anyway, she came in the studio and I played it to her and she just sat there. And I went, what's up? She went, that's like really good. I went, I oh, know. And she went, oh my God. And But the, the total shock on her face mm. like and i mm. mean and then she proceeded to sing the chorus and then add harmonies and then add other bits which was like so um brilliant watch your space kids it's a very oh, yeah, good, looking, it's a very good song looking forward to that one looking forward I'll to that. But, his, but his his story so the one <coughs> and and actually oddly i <laughs> the amount of people that came up to him and went oh i know griff because apparently <laughs> apparently he used to run a mirror shop at one point because uh, a mate of mine who, who manages mirror a bunch, shop. Of, yeah, mirror shop. A mate of mine who mar- uh, marriages manages uh, a bunch of properties. Said, oh, I remember Griff. Yeah, he used really? to talk. A, he used to talk a lot in those days as well. <laughs> and then it also turns out, bizarrely, I used to work with his guitarist in his band. Um, he's the, the he's the most. He's the most spread. He did a, a thing with Butcher the other day because yeah, 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 I saw that with his brother. 
So there was a connection there. Um, <laughs> but he's he is so connected, Griff. Mm. Like, like literally, he's. It, and I tell you, which really surprised me today, and I mean this in absolute true love and 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 frankincense and myrrh. He's a great drummer. Mm. Like. I thought, mm, is, is, is he going to be all right? He was great. No, he really surprised me how good he is. So, well done, Griff. Yeah, and exactly. your drumming well skills. And, 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 um, and he's your ho ho hos. He's also, um, he's also picked a fight with Rick Astley. And he, yes, he did. And been separated by one of the guys from Aswad. So, there you go. That was a. That See, was that's, a, a that's the great, great thing about story. his stories when they had an edge and then they had another edge. You know, it wasn't just yeah. the fight with Rick Astley, it was the fact that the guy from Aswad stepped in. Yeah, that was, exactly. you know. <laughs> but he is, and I would say, I would say, Clangers, uh, you know, go out, get, get, definitely. If you haven't listened to that one, that's well worth yeah. fifty minutes of your time. And also, again, you see, I, I think like a lot of people wouldn't know him particularly yeah. unless, you, unless you listen to his radio show, which is now on Dawn FM, uh, yeah. four o'clock every day. Um, no one would really know him, but the number of people that can't go, God, oh, that Griff guy, that Griff guy, you know. So it's nice because we're kind of opening other people's you know, doors to, to different cats who, who they might not mm. know, you know, and I, I like that. I th- mm. I feel like we're the kind of modern day kind of Silla Black, you know, introducing people to, to <laughs> Surprise, people. surprise. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, but and then obviously next. after that Ooh. was Mr. Starstruck.com. Yes. Yes. Was it was Steve Lillywhite, wasn't it? Steve Lillywhite. That was like, that was like, as you say, you know, as, as you've said on a number of occasions, it's like, you know, you sit down, you make a list, you go, oh, how much of this is kind of realistic and how much of this is unrealistic? He was on the, he was on the, oh, well, let's give it a shot list. Wasn't it, it? That was astonishing. Oh, and I couldn't believe how, uh, like, he was what different because he didn't come prepared with clangs. He just told stories that were real yeah. in his life, yeah. right? Yeah. And they, yeah. and I am like a small child at christmas in that you were, if you watch you, it back, you were very much like a, a couple of child, times though. he says things and, and 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 i was and you know as a as a producer you know he's one of my heroes and he was just chatting as you know i've i've got to work with him and visconti now and yeah. like i can ask them questions i asked yeah. the other day i asked i asked steve a question about something how would you do this and he was like mm, well i'd probably do this this and this yeah. So I'll just check it with Steve Louie White. It won't be a minute, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, you know. Exactly. But he's, right. I mean, you know, there's sort of like, again, so talk, the, the other, the other clip that really exploded in our, in, in our TikTok. In fact, this was, this was the one that I think we, we've had sort of like 80,000 views or something on this one. So it's done. It's not gone completely viral, but in our small little world of, you Is know. the Stones one? That was the sort of like that's the one with uh, that opens with the line of him going, "Of course, I produced the worst Rolling Stones yeah. album." Yeah, and it's yeah. kind and of it, like, it, and he launches into this story about how Mick and Keith weren't talking to each other, and it was what's it? It's dirty work, isn't it? And something I think, like that. Yeah, I think gen- generally accepted as probably being one of the worst. Stones but he still ever. he pr- produced the Rolling Stones, you know what I mean? And then yeah. and then when he talks about how Bono gets his vocal and how he got yeah. a vocal out of Shane McGowan. And then he, yeah. and then obviously the Kirsty, cause I was thinking, can, can we mention Kirsty McCall? Cause obviously Steve was married to Kirsty McCall, mm-hmm. who, who is tragically no longer with us. And nothing bounced off him, did it? It, it just, it flowed so well. And then uh, oh, no, he was, he, he was, he was probably, he, he was probably would win the prize for actually being, just the most well actually it's toss up to him in him and baz really it's just being the most down to earth lovely people oh i think that could be said by pretty much everybody on this list Mm. i don't don't know there was still but there was something about steve that was just i think i think because of who he is not wishing to be rude about anybody and look do you know what that was the other thing (laughs) this was this is the thing that amazed me so obviously we're musicians right so Hmm. Like the world of music, we know Steve Lillywhite was one of the most famous producers of all time, right? I thought everybody knew that, right? So people I know who aren't musicians were going, God, that's Steve bloke, he's got a few sore, isn't he? And I was like, you do know who he is, right? Uh, Is he a producer or something? He's he's produced a few people. even, even, Even my missus knew who he was. Because when I, when I, I, when I went in and I've I remember, remember the day, day we did, we interviewed him and he was like, I went in and I went, oh, I've just interviewed Steve Lillywhite. And she went, oh, I know who he is. 
yeah. and obviously through the you know that was through the probably the curse to me call um, um i, I was, I was amazed how many people didn't know who he was until they saw yeah. it and then just still didn't i still, still didn't realize mm. who he is mm. not was is yeah. you know and and i think you know that was that was a real classy moment for me i was just like how the hell did we get him mm. you know which might re- really made me think you know this guy we on that tip we should try and get Tony Visconti on here because t- I've I've sat in dressing rooms well, with Tony Visconti to to have... tell stories about Bowie and Mark Boland and no one was closer to them. So yeah. I'll have yeah. a word, Tony. If, my... Tony, if you're listening, I have yeah. suggested you on more than one occasion, but he seems to be bottling out on emailing you. Well, he's he's on our magic list, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> he is. But uh, before before we go, before we move on to before we move on to the next lovely interviewee. Um, I would say that the that there's that point in that interview with Steve where, and this is the, this is the measure of the man and his kind of like clangs. Is he's like randomly talking about? He's going, yeah. Well, I had. Um, he said, yeah. So Kirsty used to be really good friends with. Um, used to be really good friends with Johnny Marr. Hmm. And there was one occasion that I had Johnny really wanted to meet Keith Richards. So there, am I, there's there's so picture the scene. If you'd like, ladies and gentlemen, picture the scene. Nice, quiet, suburban front room in Ealing in West London um, with Steve Lillywhite on the mixing desk, Keith Richards on guitar, Johnny Marr on guitar and Kirsty McCall on vocals. And what was it said? I just left it running all night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and he didn't hang on to the recordings. No. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it was it's. That was that would I think that was the moment where I thought, if you don't ask, you don't get. You know what mm. I mean? Like, mm. and uh, yeah, that was for me as a musician, um, and for you, I know it was that was pretty special. So, uh, yeah. no, yeah. it was. It was. And then it just was. as you thought, we how are we going to top that? I remember calling you and going, um, so Baz, the singer with the Stranglers, wants to come on because he saw <laughs> the Lily White one. He yeah. messaged me and said. I'll come on your podcast. Like that literally just sorted with the management. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Because I'd obviously he was, he done my was little stint great. with the Stranglers and didn't I mean, think for a second. He, but he came to, he, he messaged me, which is like, you know, and, he and does, that, he do, he that's do, another he do, one that really blew your mind, didn't it? He does because, I mean, yeah, well, obviously there's the Jean-Jacques Bernal thing and JJ was a massive influence on me and I was a huge fan of the Stranglers. It's like, thousands of people at that age growing up with that was just you know, the first album i bought was no more heroes but yeah. baz has a very special place in my heart purely probably initially for this the wow. only man that's actually sent me a bottle of whiskey he didn't send me one by the way no that's because you that's because he doesn't like you he likes me he likes me more than you I, I, we, I and we know that's not true he, loves you. he does love me and did you know he peter here's a here's a i don't know if i told you this this is how lovely they are as a band. Obviously, yeah. if you go back and watch their viewers, I got drafted in to rehearse up with the Stranglers um, for their tour because Jim, their drummer, had hurt his hand. And I was on standby for the whole month. Not and, enough, uh, though. And it didn't quite happen. <laughs> and they just put a live album out of that tour and I got a big thank you on it, mm. which I thought was the loveliest touch. I'm on a it Stranglers is. album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Good, basically, exactly. What, that, what that did was... For my CV, I, I crossed out the Stranglers and I put the Stranglers in capitals. You know what I mean? Because I'm on one of their albums. <laughs> but I love, he, he was he was funny because we really, he, actually, he was one we had to coerce the stories out. First 20 he, minutes of that, if, if, yeah, if, if, you, if you haven't seen it, is interesting because it doesn't look like, he says a couple of times, oh, I don't, I don't really do clangy yeah. stories. And it was like, that's kind of why you're here. Yeah. And then he then just he, and up. then and then he just t- and then he goes oh yeah and I got I got picked up from Carcassonne Station or wherever it was by uh, Adam Clayton yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like with Adam Clayton going I'm just sending you a picture in case you don't recognise me in which I'm case really you go well. like hang on you're Adam yeah. Clayton why would I not recognise I you? know and then I was at Stuart Pierce's <laughs> wedding and Piercey this and Piercey that and me and you were just like this is yeah. another level and then and- I look and then I look down when I'm doing a gig and the status quo stood in yeah. the audience and and obviously. I know you do the numbers, I don't, but he's he's the number one, isn't he? He is, he is number one. That's you know, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Stranglers fan base. James Stevenson, who is frantically watching it himself to get his number. 
<laughs> Every time I ring him, he's watching it. <laughs> so then, so after that, that did we then go to Ryan Hamilton? We did. We did then go to Ryan, who's sort of like, if you haven't watched Ryan's video, go and watch it. It's bloody funny, what, and what he's an incredible, a really, and it, really lovely guy. Again, ninety nine percent of people in our world don't know who Ryan is, right? Because he's an American no. guy. Yeah. He's had a bit of a music career. He's now branched into uh, YouTubing and DJing and stuff. But there's something magical about that man as a human mm. being. There is mm. something about him. He's incredibly intelligent. He's incredibly humble. But and he's he tells some belting stories. He tells a bloody funny story about Owen Wilson. Oh, that is great with his girlfriend oh, on the balcony. That's... That's... If you haven't seen it, folks, go and see it because it no, is do, do, just do go watch the way it. the way watch. he tells that story when he's trying mm. to get his girlfriend away. It's from the way home. he tells him, <laughs> brilliant. But yeah, he's a he's a sweetheart, man. Um, yeah, and that was a yeah that was a that was a strange one because I, I I remember thinking at the time, have I have I gone too left field here? Is like no, mm. is anybody going to pick up on who this guy is? Because without a kind of real description, because he hadn't, you know. He's yeah. a musician, blah, 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 blah. But I just know him. He's so much more than just a guy who had a record deal and has some tunes out and da, 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 da. There's something magical about him. And I think I, I just, I just, I can't remember what it was that triggered it. I think I saw him on Twitter or something. Hmm. And I messaged him and just went, how you doing? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just went, Fancy coming on my podcast, and he was like, yeah, "Go on in." I think I went on his as well. You did, you did, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You you definitely yeah, <coughs> he, uh, he he wiped mine by mistake. Did he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh well, he has to go and do it again. I, Either I that, it. or were you I'm... actually were you really shit? It might have been. Yeah, it just might have been really boring. Like, you know, trying to trying to get clang in there every twelve minutes or something. I don't know. <laughs> every don't twelve know. minutes. That's quite a long time for you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Twelve seconds. I mean. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll so obviously, sure. and and at that point we were going to wrap up. Then we got one more, haven't well, we? We did. Right. We so did. so at that point, we've got a few. We've got a list. We have contacted people. We needed one more for the end of season one. Um, yeah. Certain people, and I'm, I'm, you know, I can tell you, I can tell you that. Chesney Hawks was spoken to and Chesney Hawks did agree to do it. And then suddenly Chesney Hawks became a global superstar again for getting his kit off in his video, which I did message him the other day and go, I've just seen your ass. And he, <laughs> she just sent back, sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he said to me last week, I'm oh, sorry I haven't been on the podcast, but it's kind of life's gone a bit crazy. So actually maybe what we could, maybe what we could do is if, if Chesney's being, if Chesney's being difficult to pin down, maybe we should just get his ass on. Well, it's it's a nice ass if you look at his new single and his new video. He okay. had this amazing idea of basically being naked in his video, and uh, and it's gone viral. It's like you know, it's everywhere. Some would say, some would, some would say, does that does that possibly smack of desperation? No, it, it smacks of uh, clever marketing. <laughs> Very clever marketing, actually. Well, actually, clearly, in that case, that if, so you know, talking about clever marketing, if we want to, if we want to up the ante on the podcast, you need to get your ass out, mate. Sorry, say that again. I got, I got pulled. Oh yeah, get, no. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to. Yeah, with a with an ass like mine, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, I sit Who on it most enemies. of my life. That's why, yeah. you know. Yeah. So that led us to the last person, and I, the man, again, the legend, the legend that is my mate Jamie Taylor, who is a DJ. Um, not but just, he is one not just the, any old DJ. Let's not, be honest. He DJed he's, both of our weddings for a start. He DJed both of our weddings, and he also <laughs> DJs all the Rewind festivals and stuff. Yeah, but he is one of life's my favourite human beings. And I don't see him that much, but we just message each other and all that. And I thought, he'll be he'll he'll be so funny. And I remember saying to you, you know, shall we grab him? And he didn't let us down, did he? No. He, no. he, he joyously... Floated us through, knowing he had two absolute belting mm. clangs in his back pocket, of which he kept alluding to for about 50 minutes and then just went, do you want one of them or not? And proceeded to tell us the Simon Cow story, which, 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 which I thought, which, that's I, not going to be beaten. Easily. Until easily. Yeah. he pulled out the David Beckham story, yeah. of which still yeah. people I, I know have just sent me emojis and... and um, 
And that was, it was just a joyous, if, 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 if you are one of the few people in this planet who haven't seen these Clang podcasts, um, and I would, I would suggest you watch them all because they're all so varied, but Jamie Taylor, I promise you, will make you smile because he is one of the most infectious people. And the way he told those stories, why he hasn't got his own chat show, I don't know. Well, he should, he should have um, his own podcast after that. Um, yeah, but that was genius. <laughs> and so that wrapped up. They did. Uh, they did. Season they did. one. They did. And I would if say at this point, I would say, you know, if if you haven't, you know, I, I am the man who does the numbers and I have a very particular set of skills. And if you haven't listened to all of them and if you haven't subscribed, I will find you. <laughs> I'm not saying what I'll do to you, but I will find <laughs> you. Uh, and particularly if you haven't listened to James Stevenson's, go and get him down there because he needs to get his numbers up. Yeah, he really he, he's he's a bit desperate to get his numbers up. Yes. But there are so there are twelve, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and and I, I I as I say, if you are a, a weekly bather, uh, the Thursday <laughs> night seven o'clock bathing hour, as I like to know it, <laughs> I have a bath every night. Um, but so so season two will be coming very soon, friends. Yes, it will be. Uh, we've it already will be. got a few in the bag. We've got a super list of of people who have said they're going to do it. I've got some some belters mm. in my pocket. Mm. Um, so we're looking it forward will, to it. We are going to carry on. I would, I would say season season two will land <clears throat> uh, as soon as I get my act together. Basically, that's. I think yeah. it's. I've, 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 I've been. I've been a little bit distracted recently with work. Well, maybe this little break was nice between yeah. seasons. That's what people do, isn't it? We regather, yeah. we rethink, exactly. we restructure, we can uh, rebrand. It's we like rebrand a, yeah. all these things that we're not doing. We just didn't have time to do the next one. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that's season two is coming, folks, and. Uh, and obviously, here's an open thing. If anybody would like to be on Clang the Podcast and you think that you would fit this particular podcast, please get in touch and uh, you could be one of our guests. We'll treat, Jay, you, lovely. Is, we'll treat yeah. you nicely, but you've got to do. entertain. We will do. As long, but you've got, you've got to have some good stories and you've got, you know, the bar has been set high. And I think at this point, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really mean to you, Smiley. What was your favourite clang? What was your top clang? Oh, what of all of them? Yeah, of everything? Of all of, of all of them. I think the, I think the one for me, the one I laughed at the most, I think still, funny enough, was the Simon Cowell one with Jamie Taylor. And I won't spoil it. And that's that, even that that's pipped the Beckham one for me. But for so, yeah. I think because he said that, oh, I've got two. Here's my one and then yeah. my big one. Yeah. The Simon Cowell... I'm not going to spoil it, but the, I, I, if you watch it, I, I think I actually do lose genius. my bodily functions for a couple yeah. of minutes. So it's yeah. genius. It's genius. But it I love, I've, genius. I've literally loved everybody. And I've loved they have. Yeah. I, we, I, I, can we, I just say as well, quickly, two things. One, thank you so much to all the guests giving up your time and the ones who are going to come Definitely. on. We really, we really do appreciate it. And uh, thanks, Pete, for doing all the editing and and all the hard work while I just swing in and go, "Hey, you got another wow. another clanging guest for you." But you also, know, the most you are the thing, talent. Let me just tell you, thank you to all of you people who have watched it and given us such lovely feedback. And please tell your friends. Please yeah. subscribe. We wouldn't and, be able. To, we wouldn't uh, be able to do it. I was going to say we wouldn't be able to do it without you, but we would. But it just wouldn't be anywhere near as enjoyable. And being a man, as you said, of, sort of obsessed with numbers, I would have, um, I think I'd have, uh, yes, I'd have canned it a long time ago if, nah. if, if it wasn't for you lovely people listening to it. And also I've just, and I've, it, it's kind of, <laughs> I've had a few kind of connections now on Facebook with all the, uh, with lots of your crowd who seem like an all really lovely bunch of people as well. And I just like, and I do, I, I'm, I'm going to specifically call out a Sir, uh, Nigel who's, um, who's, uh, who's, who's clang mug order I've, cocked up so i apologize about that and i have sent you a message apologizing but i'm going to apologize again <laughs> um, yes don't forget people clang mugs clang yes he's mug. now did we, available did, did, I, did, 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 did we mention we had mugs we uh they are available from the should we show the link below at this point do you think would that be I, cool i probably yes i it'll be somewhere in one of the descriptions or tagged onto the bottom of this yeah yeah d d i yeah i didn't i stared yeah. at him enough on screen <laughs> i didn't want to be staring oh. at him on a mug you put what well, you put me looking like Alan Partridge. Uh -huh. like, oh, yeah. 
But there you go. Um, right. It's been a pleasure. It Thank you, everybody, been. who's come for the ride. We're looking forward to season two. We are. Uh, already got some great guests. So stick around. We we'll let you know. But uh, once again, it's uh, good night from me and it's good night from him. Thanks for that. Good night. See you later. Clang. Clang. The podcast.